Well, hello, all you raging, aging beauties. I'm Adventure Jenny, and in today's episode, I am going to do our 60-day carnivore diet reveal, including lab work that I just got back from my doctor. Um, you can check my videos up here. We talked about that in my last episode. So this is what we'd be doing. And in my next video, make sure you stay tuned for that too, because I'm going to begin some face yoga so that we can track results. And you'll want to stick around until the end of this video where I'm going to share my three best stress relieving tips. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. So first, just a little recap for those of you who aren't aware of what the carnivore diet is. It is a nutrition strategy where you eliminate basically everything that is not animal based. You do not eat fruits and vegetables. You don't eat carbohydrates, sugars, sweets, cakes, cookies, all that kind of thing. Seeds and seed oils. All of that is eliminated from the diet and you only eat animal-based foods. Red meats, ruminants particularly and especially, but any kind of red meat and also uh, pork, chicken, uh, poultry of, you know, any kind and fats butter, ghee, you know, you name it. Eggs, eggs and some dairy are allowed, cheese, those kind of things, but, you know, kind of a little bit sparing on those is more highly encouraged. Now, as for why to try the carnivore strategy, uh, everyone has their own reasons. There's a lot of benefits that have been reported. People report everything from immune deficiency improvements, um, weight loss is a huge reason that a lot of people go after it. Uh, mood stability improvements. Um, for me, it was mostly for the elimination part of it. The biggest reason it is for discovering and uncovering food allergies. I have a lot of allergies, food related and otherwise, and I have gotten to a point where I really need to be able to identify. Um, I may end up staying on a carnivore diet. I'll find out a little bit more and decide a little, a little more definitely at the 90 day mark or beyond. But if I do go back to incorporating other things into my diet, it's just going to be a slight downgrade to, you know, to ketobore or keto, ketogenic type of, of strategy. And another big reason that I decided to give this a try was for the relief or hopefully finding relief for the perimenopause, menopausal symptoms, um, including mood stability, which I already mentioned, but that does go along with hormonal imbalance. So, uh, mood improvement, sleep improvement, and of course, you know, other things that just are kind of side benefits, the hair, skin, and nails. I'm already seeing improvements in that. Mood stability, I'm seeing improvement there. But my own doctor, as well as many medical professionals here in the YouTube uh, community that advocate this strategy also say the same thing, that it's going to take at least 90 days to see the full benefits of any mood stability changes. So I expect there to be further improvements as far as that goes. I have had to maintain my hormone replacement therapy, um, but I do think that in time, I should be able to eliminate that as well and just do it dependent on the, the carnivore lifestyle. But the reason that I'm going to be giving you those three big tips on stress relief at the end is because stress dictates a lot of our hormone balance, not just in menopause ladies, but this goes for basically everyone. Hormones are a key to a lot of our body functions and stress will inhibit the production and the utilization of a lot of our hormones. And in menopause or perimenopause, I guess, you know, when we're looking for that estrogen replacement, naturally that replacement would come from our backup, which is through the adrenals. But the adrenals are highly affected by cortisol levels and stress levels. That's why I want to give you some tips on how to eliminate stress. Not to mention that those very same hormones that are out of balance contribute to the reason why you can't lose that belly fat, especially in menopause. So it's really important not only to get a good diet with carnivore, also incorporating exercise, but 
to manage your stress is just hugely important. So my journey getting to the 60 day mark has been actually quite an adventure. And uh, I will say that I flip and slipped off the, the wagon uh, at one point. We took out Christmas cookies that had been frozen, leftovers, and I could not resist. So I fell off the wagon, I had cookies. Now as far as allergy testing goes and my reasons for doing this carnivore strategy, I can already tell you that it is going to be a huge benefit to have eliminated everything because when I ate those cookies, I had such a horrible reaction. Okay, my doctor, when I went in yesterday and told her about it, she did blood work, so I'll report my lab findings here in just a few minutes. But she did say that, I mean, it could be food, or it could be sugar allergy, but sugar allergy is really extremely rare. Sugar addiction is much more common for all of us, but and then all the negative things that go along with it. Uh, it makes people sick and they don't even know it's making them sick. So it could just be that I eliminated it completely from my diet and then reintroducing so much of it all at once, just whammo to my system, did a real number on me. It made me horribly sick and it made me have such a horrible allergic type reaction. I mean, there were, a, uh, there was, I probably should have gone to the hospital or at least had an EpiPen handy. I did have my Arbuterol inhaler and that was a lifesaver. So I have to attribute the carnivore diet to somewhat of the life savings grace that it gave because without it, I wouldn't know how severe some of these allergies are. And I am going to be interested in at least trying some other foods once I reach the 90 day mark. I will caution everyone, if and when you try the carnivore strategy and you go to reintroduce foods, treat yourself just like a little baby, newborn who just comes off of the, the milk and then the baby food and you're reintroduce or you're, when you first start introducing different baby foods, you know that you do it for one food item at a time for three days. You want to do that for yourself as well, because especially if you have allergies and you're trying to discover what they are because if you do have a reaction, it can be very severe. If your system has been without these things for quite a while, it can shock you. So it's important to reintroduce one at a time and make sure you know what's causing the reaction if anything does cause one. That was very important for me and I'm grateful that I'm giving this a try for that reason. Um, I was not in it, as I said, for the weight loss, but I am happy again to report amongst other things that I'm able to maintain my weight of 118 to 120 pounds, um, which is where I wanted to be. I was worried about losing weight and I didn't want to. I lost my weight through a different diet regime a few years back, but with this diet, even though I'm consuming high fat and lots of it, it has been easy to maintain and I can also see where it would be easy to lose weight if that was the goal. But just to give you an example, I know you can't see a full body shot, but this is kind of where I'm at and you know, I'm happy to say that this diet has made it easy to, to stay right where I need to be weight wise. So that's great news for me and any of you watching that want to give it a try. Now, as far as my lab results, my doctor just called with the results this morning and I'm happy to report that everything is within normal parameters, basically except one thing. But my, let me look at my notes here. Hang on just a minute. I wrote everything down when she called. My uh, blood sugar's normal, kidneys normal, liver uh, numbers are normal, um, B12 normal, um, vitamin D3. Okay, this is where she wants me taking a supplement and she's calling that prescription in because um, my numbers are low. They're on they're on the high end of low, but it's still something that needs to be supplemented. Vitamin D3 is is what helps us absorb calcium into our bones and as women, that's very important especially as we go through menopause, we lose bone density. Don't want that to happen. Normally, you get D3 from sunshine, okay? It can also be um intake in, in the diet, but it, it's a little bit harder to take it in, in the diet. You get it through egg yolks, through 
uh, fish, flesh, you know, like salmon and mackerel and organ meats of like beef liver is a big one. But still, the amounts of D3 that you take in through those sources may not be significant enough if you're already suffering a depletion. Sunshine is your best friend when it comes to getting proper amounts of D3. However, take a look at this little video I shot for you. This is what I have going on for me as far as sunshine goes. It's just not happening right now. It's winter time. We're not, you know, there's just no sun to be had. And if you're like me, most of us women with our skincare regime, we're slathering on sunscreen, whether it's rain, shine, or in between anyway. So our skin doesn't get much of a chance. That sunscreen, most of it blocks out 97% of any D3 that we could take in through exposure to the sun. So, you know, I would say that you need to get some sunshine on your skin, not enough to get sunburned, but just enough to flush your skin and get it a little bit ruddy red, uh, you know, get yourself a little bit warmed up by it, you know. Go outside, take your coffee out in the sun in the morning if you have sunshine, but do it before you put your sunscreen on and do your morning beauty routine. Um, that's best or do it late in the evenings after you've taken all your makeup off and washed your face before you put your nighttime creams and lotions on you know get some sun on your skin if you're able to if not get it through your diet the the forms of food that I mentioned but other than that you're gonna need to supplement you can't miss out on your d3 so that's why it's really important to get your blood work done when you're doing the carnivore strategy so that you know where you're at on everything. I don't expect that you, much like me, you won't find many numbers out of whack, but the ones that are, you can catch it and you can, you know, strategize to uh, compensate for anything that's, that's missing. It's just a healthy thing to do. So that is the best of all the carnivore good news for my 60 days on it so far. I am going to give you as a bonus my favorite recipe because I've had a lot of fun with the cooking and my meat salad has been one of my favorites. So look for that recipe down below in the descriptions box. And as I promised, I am also going to share with you my three best tips for my stress relief strategy because as I said already, you, you can't have your hormones out of whack. So my number one method for relieving stress is quiet time away from everyone in prayer or meditation incorporated with deep breathing, cleansing yourself spiritually, mentally, and getting your body oxygenated all at the same time is such an enormous stress relief. Take some time in a quiet space every day. Do your breathing, do your prayers, do your meditation. My second tip for relieving stress is to reach out to an old friend or a loved one, someone that you care about that's been on your mind. We've all got those people. Someone that you miss dearly, that you always loved, always had fun with, always shared a closeness with, but maybe you've drifted apart. Maybe life is just busy and we've all got all of our obligations, our chores, our jobs, our commitments, our YouTube channel, whatever it is that's keeping you from it. If it's causing you some guilt, then it's causing you some stress and it's probably going to do you and that other person a lot of good if you just spend a little bit of time showing each other how much you love and care for each other even still. Schedule an hour together, talk on the phone, go for a lunch date, go shopping, go for a girls night out, whatever it may be. All the work that you have to do and all the chores that you have to do will still be there waiting for you tomorrow. They're not going anywhere. So if you take a little time to nurture your relationships, it's going to take a world of weight off of your conscience and it's going to cause you to rest a whole lot easier at night. Speaking of rest, that brings me to tip number three from Adventure Jenny. One of the best things that you can do 
is get your rest, get your sleep every night. You know, I'm not saying that everybody has to have a full eight hours. Maybe five hours is all your body really needs. Let your body dictate what you need, but make sure you don't neglect to give yourself that. Take some melatonin and a cup of chamomile tea. Going through menopause, our sleep gets so disrupted sometimes because of hormones and because of hot flashes and everything else. So, you know, not to mention again, that workload and everything else, you think that getting up an hour early to do the treadmill or staying up an hour later to work on that YouTube video editing or whatever it is that you have going on. Believe me, that belly fat is going to come off a lot easier if you spend that hour getting extra rest than it is from trying to get extra exercise in, okay? I'm not saying not to exercise, I'm just saying make sure you're getting enough rest as a priority. And you will just, you'll see your hormones coming more in line along with the diet strategy that you're putting into place and you'll see a lot more improvement in your overall wellness. I hope you found some benefit from this. If you have, then please hit the like and subscribe button as well as hitting the notification bell so that you know when my next video is coming up. Don't forget we've got face yoga that we're going to start tracking to see how well we can improve things with that. I believe in it. I believe that we can and I thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you next time.